Pia Winberg is the director and chief scientist of Venus Shell Systems, a marine biotechnology company. She joins us from Bomdedi in Australia. Pia, good to speak with you. Take us through, if you can, some of the techniques you use to make use of waste. So we use we farm seaweed, um, and seaweed is a, is a new mass, if you like, in the West. It's existed in uh, Eastern countries for a very long time. Um, but in the Western world, we haven't really embraced the opportunities behind seaweed as a biomass. 70% of the planet is oceans. And so we have such a huge opportunity to create new materials um, that can replace the plastics that, that are damaging um, our oceans, ironically, at the same time. So when we farm seaweed, we can use um, the molecules from seaweed to create products that mimic plastic. Uh, and slowly we're getting to cover all of the different types of plastics, soft plastics, hard plastics. We need to start with the high value plastics uh, and replacing those in the beginning because that's what can, can carry companies forward as they start to develop the technology and make it cheaper as we scale. Um, but seaweed is a future of biomaterials that uh, will eventually be big enough to replace the whole production of plastics on Earth. I'm blowing my mind with the science. Tell us what it is so specific to seaweed that makes it such a useful material to become a replacement for plastic. Well, uh, we could use materials from land as well, like the bananas. Um, the, we, we already are using things like wheat and starch. The challenge with that, though, is that we're using materials that are farmed on land um, and the land environments that support the production of these, uh, these molecules are becoming limited and we're competing with food sources. And that's really where the unique opportunity for seaweed um, is because, you know, 70% of the ocean, we could farm so much of it without damaging what is current food production. Um, but on top of that, seaweeds have very exciting molecules that uh, we don't get in land plants. So some of the molecules from seaweed are actually uh, quite smart, highly charged molecules that uh, we can incorporate into materials within our bodies even, replacing some of the uh, synthetic, synthetic materials we're using in bionics, for example. And these, these molecules can even start to communicate with each other in unique ways that aren't, aren't as simple as the starches that we find in land plants. So this, the seaweed opportunity is really about how big it can become because... We've got the whole of 70% of planet Earth to produce seaweed, um, as well as how smart and novel these materials are. We haven't even begun to explore uh, the complexity of how these molecules can function. That's really interesting. So it's the abundance and that just how clever it is. Now, on a, on a sort of a wider um, look at this then, Pia, what do you think needs to be done to try and stop people using so much plastic and single-use plastic items? I know that there's a lot of rhetoric around, lots of uh, government directives to try and reduce the waste, but I still see people using them all the time, every day. Yes, there's so many areas that we can uh, reduce the use of, of plastic just because we really don't need that product wrapped up in plastic. So it's, it's really up to a mixture of consumers as well as the manufacturers to start questioning, taking responsibility for this. In countries such as Indonesia, just north of where I am in Australia, um, they've had such a, a publicly <laughs> exposed um, uh, extent of plastic pollution uh, and it's really sad because it impacts the ocean environment directly where so many of the tourists are and this has actually been a trigger for some of the most um, frontier developments in seaweed plastics to emerge because Indonesia is already a producer uh, one of the world's largest producers of seaweed uh, traditionally in, in food ingredient products but now because they have so much of it as well as the trigger of so much ocean pollution, they're able to start harnessing um, the opportunity of making uh, seaweed-based polymers and plastics. Uh, uh, but as well, they're starting to look at how can they use other, other products to wrap foods that don't need to be in plastic straight away. They're using banana leaves and other things in supermarkets. So we really need to start with what can we replace today in the supermarket that doesn't need a very long shelf life um, uh, packaging on it? Because we're packaging sometimes foods in, that will last, you know, a day in the supermarket and a few hours at home even. 
and we're wrapping it in something that will last on the planet for millions of years. Uh, and so it really is um, a question of just eliminate what we don't need to start with. Then we can start to look at, okay, where we need to have good shelf life, good moisture barriers, good oxygen barriers, uh, then we can start to pay for some of the more expensive um, molecules at the moment that can be developed into plastics. Um, and, and so it's really a question of consumers driving um, with their paying dollar, um, a little bit like they have done for solar panels and now electric cars. We need to start choosing the, more, the less, less plastic polluting uh, solutions in our supermarkets today and start asking uh, in supermarkets and stores that we are at, start rejecting the products that come covered in plastic because it is the consumer that makes the decision in the long run. Absolutely, and you can always make that alternative choice. I get really angry at myself if I, if I leave my, uh, my big bag at home and I have to take a plastic bag. So we all have to make those, those choices each time. Okay, Pia Winberg from Venus Shell Systems, thanks for being with us. <laughs>